and welcome back to Everard Junction. Today I'm going to take a break from the scenery and focus on a little bit of weathering. So before we get started, I've got a couple of things that might be of interest to you. So first bit of news, there's a competition you might be interested in. I've weathered this wagon and you could be within a chance of winning it. Oh my god! There's a link in the description uh, which will take you to the Warley channel and there's a video all about this and you can enter the competition from there. And the second thing is that uh, I'm planning to go to the uh, London Festival of Railway Modelling on Sunday the 24th, so that's the Sunday of this weekend. Um, I should be there all day, and I know a lot of you were keen to see me at Warley and didn't know I was going or missed out or whatever reason. Um, so if you spot me on the day, feel free to come and grab me, say hello and have a chat. Okay, so with that out of the way, let's move on to the subject of today's video, and that is weathering. Something I love doing on model railways is weathering. It's one of my favourite things to get the stock looking really uh, realistic, give it that used appearance. The same applies for roads, buildings, bridges, uh, whatever. Um, but one of the things that's perhaps the hardest to weather, and a lot of people shy away from, is the models of the trains themselves. I'm sure you've noticed that most of the stuff running on the layout is weathered or repainted to some extent. Um, there are a few items, such as the ones in front of you, that have escaped the weathering so far. So I thought that would be a good subject uh, for today's video. So I've got a couple of things uh, I'm going to get weathered today. We've got a, a locomotive, we've got some wagons, and we've got uh, passenger and uh, baggage stock. I'll be using broadly the same methods for all of it, but the level of uh, weathering intensity will vary depending on the type of item that I'm weathering. Okay, I'm going to make a start on weathering these two goods vans. Uh, the one on the left is a VGA, um, design of wagon dating from the sort of late 70s, 80s onwards. Um, the one on the right is a VDA, it's a much older vehicle, um, they were built from the 1960s onwards. Uh, they're both in the rail freight distribution livery, so both vehicles have had a repaint um, at some point in their lives, and this places them in the late 1980s. Many of them were still in the uh, sort of grey and red rail freight livery, um, but as these are in the uh, more updated rail freight distribution livery, they're not going to be too heavily weathered, as uh, the paint jobs would have only been a year or two old at the time my layout is set. Obviously, if you're modelling something like the mid-90s and later, then you can really make these wagons look quite filthy. Um, but it's important to take into consideration the period you are modelling and what condition were the vehicles in during that period, rather than just applying the same amount of grime to everything. OK, so I'm going to uh, give the wagons a quick clean, first of all. They've been on the layout for some time, so they're going to be a bit dirty and contaminated. And I would do the same if they were brand new. You don't know uh, what they've been exposed to in the box, in transit and during manufacture. Um, I don't want any fingerprints or nastiness to occur um, to my nice weathering uh, paint job to the wagon. I use isopropyl alcohol and a uh, kitchen towel to do this, uh, but you can also wash the model in some warm soapy water if you prefer. Okay, the model is now clean. You can see the dirt that came off it. That would all be under the paint had I not bothered. Okay, I've taken the wheels off of the wagon, as you can see here, and uh, now it's just time to give them a coat of rail match sleeper grime, which is a nice dirty brown color, perfect for doing wheels. Okay, next thing I'm going to do is just apply a very thin wash of black paint to the side of the model and this will help bring out all of the bits of detail where the things like the door handles and the uh, gaps uh, between the various panels that make up the wagon are. It's a really nice little effect, it gives that uh, look of depth and built up dirt without having to uh, spray loads and loads of weathering all over the side of the wagon. I'm using some Vallejo uh, black paint, it's just a black acrylic paint, uh, I really like the Vallejo stuff, it works very nice. 
uh, nice thin wash, you don't want it too thick, otherwise uh, you will end up painting the wagon black. So we'll just uh, we'll try it on a small area. Yeah, that's about right, that's not too far off. So what we do now is we wash all the bits of the detail. Okay, I'll leave the wagon on its side to dry, but you can see the uh, the little bits of uh, black where it's darker along all of the various boards and bits and pieces that make up the wagon. And the wagon's not really dirty, but we've we've accented all those little bits of detail. You can build this process up as well. So if it's too if it's too thin, it's too subtle for your liking, just uh, wait for it to dry, go over it again. Just sucked up the excess paint with a cotton bud, very useful tool when you're doing stuff like this. And you can see just how well the black wash has settled onto the detail of the wagon and it's really put some grime and some shadows in those hard to reach areas that are always going to get covered in dirt. One of the worst places on a wagon is the end. They always get extremely dirty. Any cleaning that is done usually doesn't reach the ends of the wagon. So it's important to get a nice good wash in this area too. I've just applied the wash to the rest of the uh, wagons, including the roof. This will just help add to the uh, various effects that we're going to add later. You can see it just looks a little bit, a little bit dirty now, a little bit used. We've got uh, various bits of detail have been highlighted. It's all still drying, obviously. It will fade as it dries. Bits of detail on the ends. There will be, as with uh, anything that you uh, wash by using a paintbrush. You get a couple of bits that don't look quite right, but uh, when the airbrush comes out later, that really doesn't matter because it'll just all sort of blend in. Over on the VGA wagon you can see similar effects. I've done the roof as well, it's still drying obviously, and uh, quite by accident, I don't even think I can tell you what I did um, to get that effect because I don't know what I did myself, but we've got a really nice natural looking grimy spot appearing in the middle of each panel and it's done that on both sides. I think that's just because I used such a watered down uh, wash but uh, that actually uh, is quite an interesting effect so I'm going to leave it. The, uh, the airbrush will blend it in slightly and it should look uh, nice and realistic when it's done. So while those two dry I'm going to move on to uh, this vehicle. This is a GUV or a general utility van or a GUV they were seen absolutely everywhere and they formed the backbone of many of the uh, mail and newspaper uh, trains that ran during the 1980s. Most of the pictures I've seen of these vehicles show them to be in such a state that you can't even tell that they are blue. Now, I don't quite want to go to that extent, um, but uh, the weathering effects on this can be considerably more aggressive. So as per the wagons, I'm going to do a, a wash I won't film it, you've already seen me do the wash. Uh, I'm going to wash around the doors and a little bit of the sole bar along there, maybe even get some in the vents as well, just to uh, highlight the various bits of detail on the side of the vehicle. And then uh, we'll move on to uh, 
spraying on the uh, the weathering effects. Uh, something I won't do on this is mask up the windows. I'm not going to bother um, because the real things sometimes they're so bad you can't even tell they've got windows. Literally the whole side of the wagon or coach just looks like it's been painted a sort of dark brown colour. Just adding some uh, streaking to the little grills on the side. You can do this with weathering powder or with paint. I've chosen to do with paint today. Okay, there's some streaking added to the side of the body on this one. Hopefully you saw the technique, it is a bit difficult to film and uh, do it at the same time. And uh, it's literally just a little blob of paint where you think that uh, the rain is going to wash dirt down the uh, side of the vehicle. And as soon as you put that little blob of paint on, wipe it down with a piece of kitchen towel or a cotton bud or, or whatever you have to hand. And uh, if the intent, if the effect is too intense for your liking, just keep keep wiping on it, and uh, you will eventually wipe most of the paint back off again. You can see we've got some nice streaking effects along the side of this one. When I do the general weathering on the side of this, it will blend some of these in a little better, and it will look a little bit more natural. But even so, just like that, that's already an improvement. I'll now go ahead and do the other side. OK, the wash has now dried on this wagon, so now it's time to uh, get the airbrush out. Airbrush is ready. Yes, it is very dirty, it's got paint all over it, but for an airbrush that's eight years old, it's doing me very well. It's a Iwata uh, Eclipse HPCS, which I bought at least eight years ago, maybe longer. Uh, so it's got a few scars and a few bits of paint and stuff all over it, but uh, it served me very well. So now I'm going to actually do some airbrushing. This is the most fun bit for me. Uh, I'm going to start off with the sleeper grime. I'm going to do the underframe of the wagon. I tend to start with the lighter colours first. So the, the sort of sleeper grime is sort of a brown sort of colour. It's a bit lighter than the greys and the black that I might apply later. So I'll start off with that and then we'll build up the effects from there. I've already mixed up some in the airbrush ready to go. 50-50 mix with uh, paint and thinner. Okay, so we're going to start weathering the uh, base, the uh, underframe of this wagon. Uh, I apologise if it's difficult to see, but uh, it is certainly not very easy filming uh, airbrushing, filming paint spraying, but we'll, we'll see how we go. So I don't know how much of that you could see, but uh, there you can see we've done just uh, a couple of passes along the underframe of the wagon, and I've held the airbrush in such a way to deliberately get some overspray up along the bottom of the actual body of the wagon. The same applies for the ends, and I also leave the couplings on just to weather those as well, otherwise uh, the couplings in bright shiny plastic will look a bit strange. You can see how the wash that I did earlier is uh, complementing the sprayed on effects very nicely and any bits of the wash that didn't look very good have now blended with the overspray and, and the rail match paint to uh, give a, an overall uh, a convincing dirty look.
Okay, I've changed the colour to uh, Rail Match Roof Dirt, which is a very dark grey. It sort of looks a bit. Uh, it looks a bit like that. I've mixed in a little bit of the sleeper grime. I didn't want it to be uh, a completely different colour to what I've already sprayed on. So now what I'm going to do is just blend some of the weathering along the bottom of the wagon here with this darker grey. Okay, now we're just going to uh, tone the roof down with the roof dirt, hence the, uh, the name of the colour. I'm just going to uh, thin the paint down a little bit. Don't want to go too crazy on the roof of the wagon. Uh, you can do a lot of really cool weathering effects to the roof, but uh, as both of these wagons are in a more recent paint job, it's quite possible that during that time the, uh, the roofs were reskinned and various bits of maintenance were done. So I'm going for a sort of clean, used look. Okay, that's those two nearly finished. You can see how well the roof comes out with the roof dirt uh, colour. You get that real nice matte um, colour. It looks like the wagon's been in service for a number of years. Any sh evidence of any paint or shininess has uh, pretty much disappeared. While I've got the roof dirt ready, I shall uh, do the roof of uh, the general utility van. Now, I said earlier that uh, I wasn't going to mask up the windows, and that's correct, I'm not going to mask up the windows, but I need to be careful when I spray, watch the, uh, the pattern of the spray, make sure I'm painting in the correct place. I don't want to uh, plaster the windows to the point where you can't, you can't even see them. Uh, we're not going for that level of weathering. Perhaps this one was cleaned six months ago, let's say. <laughs> the roof's weathered on this one. You can see how uh, nice and matte it looks. I might add some extra effects to that as uh, this particular vehicle is considerably uh, older in terms of when it was last overhauled, uh, so it's quite likely that the roof may have had some damage to it, so we might experiment with that. Uh, so for now, it's time to uh, do the, the, uh, the underframe. I've got uh, some sleeper grime mixed up, and uh, as I've said previously, these GUVs got absolutely plastered when they were in normal revenue service. Um, to find a clean one was quite a rare occurrence and as I've said previously some were so dirty you could hardly tell they even had windows. Um, Sleeper Grime is an excellent colour for weathering these as far as the pictures I've seen go. Um, the level of dirt on the side of them is almost exactly the same shade. So I'm going to be reasonably aggressive but I still want some of the printed detail to be visible and I still want to be able to tell that this thing was originally blue. So uh, we'll see uh, what it looks like after some sleeper grime.
quite pleased with that nice layer of grime I haven't gone crazy as you can see you can still tell that this thing is painted blue and uh, now the the streaking effects that I did at the beginning are really blending in quite nicely to the overall effect things like the doors you can see how the gaps around the doors are really well defined and picked out there's a load of dirt in there that uh, will never wash off no matter how many times this thing passes through a coach washer so I'll leave that one to dry and uh, I will take wheels off it and paint those separately I left them on on this one and one of the other wagons as I actually found it was easier to uh, manipulate them on the bench um, with the wheels on okay now things are getting a little bit more difficult now we have a passenger vehicle the wagons I've just done and uh, also that uh, baggage car uh, you can get away with making a few mistakes on those because they are reasonably dirty in real life due to the nature of what they do. So if you make a mistake, you get something that doesn't look very good, you can just sort of over-weather that area. You just, just spray a lot of stuff on it and um, it'll look like there's, uh, there's, there's nothing wrong. Um, on a passenger vehicle, they were typically kept cleaner. And I know I'm modelling British Rail, but even they did, it, they were cleaner. So I need to be careful, I need to make sure that this thing doesn't look like it's on the scrap heap. It needs to have the, uh, the wash applied around the doors, um, the roof needs toning down, the underframe needs a good layer of grime, but the body side needs to be relatively clean. You can see I've masked up the side of the coach. This is primarily just to avoid any overspray getting onto the body side and to protect the windows from any overspray. On the uh, wagons that I did previously, um, the overspray from the roof enhanced the weathering effects but in this case it's a passenger vehicle it needs to be a bit cleaner so I'm going to weather the roof first as that's where most of the paint is going to go and then when I do the underframe we can have a little bit of overspray going up onto the blue at the base of the coach and I'll add in a couple of effects with the uh, brush and the black paint and other than that that's about as far as I want to take it. Passenger vehicle should be cleaner, needs to look a bit cleaner than the freight rolling stock. You can see how much the roof has toned down already. Even just doing something as simple as that, if you're a bit nervous about taking any further, does just make a big difference, especially from a model railway perspective, as you spend most of your time viewing the trains as they go around from this sort of angle. So the roof is hugely important. So we've got a nice faded effect there, and the sides are still clean at the moment. We'll now weather the sides a little bit. It's important to do some weathering, but just don't want to go too crazy. This is a Mark 1 in blue and grey, so even by the time my layout is set, it would have been due for a repaint. So uh, we can make it look a little bit tatty. I'm just very conscious not to overdo things like passenger vehicles and some locomotives. It's very difficult to film applying the wash to the doors as I use a very small uh, paintbrush and a steady hand uh, but hopefully you'll be able to see the difference. So here is the model as it stands, as it comes out of the box and then here is one that I've, I've just done. You just see how the door looks a little bit more defined, just looks a bit better. It's hard to put your finger on what the effect actually does to the whole model but uh, I think it's worth doing. Right, back on this one again. Hope you're keeping up. Uh, it's just easier to keep chopping and changing between them as various others are drying. 
So I'm going to focus on the roof of uh, this one now. Very happy with the weathering in general, but the roof is a little bit too uniform. I think some patch repairs on the roof um, wouldn't go amiss here, as well as a little bit more weathering perhaps on some of the ventilators and the, uh, the little bits of detail here um, that are designed to keep the rainwater away from the doors. I've got no set method in mind for weathering the roof just yet. I'm just going to have a go with the brushes and the airbrush and see how things go. At the end of the day, if I do it and I don't like it, I can just repaint the roof um, with the airbrush and start again. Okay, well there it is. I bet for a minute you were thinking, what is he doing? It was, uh, it looked very garish, didn't it? But the trick is, after you've done it, to go over it again with the uh, the roof dirt or whatever colour you decide. I have put a bit of black in the roof dirt just to uh, dull it down a little bit further. So that's the sort of finish we're looking at now. So you can see various places where fitters have had to come along with uh, tubes of sealant and uh, brushes of thick paint and bodge the roof back together to stop it from leaking. I think it complements the uh, the model quite well. It's a subtle effect, as I said uh, earlier. Um, it looked really rather garish and horrible, um, but the trick is to go over it um, with the airbrush after you've done it. The same process is true for the, uh, the black wash on the doors and things like that. Going over it with the airbrush afterwards just uh, beds it in, makes it look part of the model. Okay, well I'm going to apply the same principle to uh, the roof of this Mark I, albeit not quite as extreme as the uh, previous effort. Uh, pays to do some research, obviously I've done my research, there's a discussion on RM Web about uh, roof weathering, and there's an example just there. So this is what I'm trying to, uh, to recreate. It's, uh, it's a difficult effect to do because it, it can be uh, quite garish, but uh, we'll see how it goes. Okay, I've just weathered the underframe, and if you're nervous, you can still you can stop there. That uh, that certainly looks way better than it did when it came out of the box. But uh, I'm literally just going to do a very gentle pass with the airbrush down the uh, the blue, just to get a little bit of dirt from the underframe going up onto the body side, make it look like it's been you know a couple of weeks or at least a few days since it was last cleaned. So 
So there we go. That's about the uh, sort of weathering that uh, I prefer. I don't like to take them too much further than that. That's a nice used in-service look. Certainly a vast improvement to how they look straight out of the box. Okay, so now it's time to uh, do something a bit more serious. This is the bit a lot of people shy away from. So here we have a brand new Backman Class 47. Uh, this is 47576 Kings Lynn in the very attractive original specification Network Southeast livery. And uh, I've actually had this model for over a year. I bought it um, before this layout existed. Uh, I bought it when I was between layouts. Uh, knew it wouldn't last very long in the shops and it's been waiting for me ever since. So as you can see, it's far too clean. Uh, it needs to be given that in-service look. As I've never opened this before, I will just check that it actually works and uh, put a decoder in it uh, before I go ahead with weathering it. Not that I can send it back to the shop anyway since I've had it for over a year. That seems to be working all right. I'll give it a quick oil before I actually run it in as it's been sitting around for a while. But uh, it works, so it's ready to be weathered. Okay, so now it's time to uh, start weathering it. First thing I've done is I've just fitted all of the fiddly little bits of extra detail onto the uh, front of the locomotive, as I typically uh, run all my locomotives with a cosmetic uh, front and then the, the coupling on the rear. So first thing I'm going to do is focus on weathering the underframe and uh, as you can see this particular locomotive 47576 um, when it was out shopped in this livery had been uh, tarted up by its depot. You can see they've painted the axle boxes yellow, the uh, white uh, t uh, treatment has been done to the wheels and the, uh, the buffers are also a, a polished silver colour. I'll be toning this down, I've never been a fan of the white treatment on the wheels and uh, as my research has shown there is a picture of the real thing and uh, it is quite dirty along the base. The axle boxes, the wheels, none of that's visible and that picture was taken in November 1988. I'm modelling 1988 onwards so uh, the locomotive will represent the picture that I've found. the bogies and the fuel tank weathered. Obviously as per previous models I cleaned these with isopropyl alcohol first before applying the weathering. They've just had a coat of sleeper grime and I have decided to keep some hint of the painting on the axle boxes behind but uh, for the most part I'm following the picture that I found online. I'll now put these back on as the wheels and the bogies are now pretty much weathered. I'll add some extra effects afterwards. Okay, so you can see how that's toned everything down. Quite happy with how that's looking. So now I'm going to do the same to the ends, just tone them down. I'll be careful and I'll follow the picture that I found to uh, keep some of the detail, you know, the, the bright yellow paint, the red buffer beam and stuff like that. And I also need to put a bit of masking tape over the LEDs just to protect those. Okay, while the uh, chassis and the wheels dry, 
Uh, you can see I've masked up the, uh, the body sides, including the cab ends, and now we're going to weather the roof. Uh, similar to the passenger uh, vehicle that we did earlier, I don't want too much dirt on the body sides, so when weathering the roof it's important to mask up the body sides and weather that separately afterwards. If you just leave everything on mast and weather away, you'll end up with something that looks like this. And while that's appropriate on a freight vehicle, passenger vehicle, not quite so much. It's also a very nice colour scheme and a smart looking locomotive. I don't want to go crazy with the weathering. I'm trying to replicate the picture that I've seen and that, is, that shows a locomotive that is cleaned somewhat regularly and looks quite presentable in its own right. Okay, so once again, that was a pass of roof dirt. That should dry to a nice faded finish should complement the roof very nicely. You saw originally the roof was painted black and it was a sort of glossy colour so this will tone that down and now once that's dried that will take extra effects similar to how we did the, uh, the roof on the uh, coaches earlier. While that's just flashing off I shall add a bit of roof dirt uh, to these sides just to tone down some of the sleeper grime and create a little bit of variation in places. I've noticed on the uh, the picture that the fuel tank is a little bit more of a, uh, a sort of grimy uh, grey sort of colour, whereas the, uh, the bogies are a little bit more of that dusty brown, uh, which is quite typical of a lot of diesel locomotives. So uh, I will uh, just do that and uh, continue with the weathering effects. Now the roof's flashed off, we'll just do a little bit of exhaust grime around the uh, exhaust port just here. This is best done with an airbrush. All of the extra um, dirty black effects from all of the grills and stuff along here I will do with a brush. Um, I've airbrushed them before, they don't look as good as if they're done by hand with a brush. I've picked out all the uh, shutters and grills in the black wash. Still drying at the moment, which is why some of it looks a little blotchy, perhaps a little bit intense. Once it's dried, it will blend in a little better. So now, similar to the uh, roof of the uh, coaches that uh, I've already done, I will add some dry brush uh, streaking effects to represent some dirt that's been washed down the side of the roof by the rain. Okay, so just a quick pass over the roof with roof dirt once again, just to blend in some of these streaks. You can see they're there, they're very, very subtle, and that's the effect I'm going for. Straight away, the whole model just looks much better with a more convincing looking roof. So now I'll put the body back onto the chassis and continue to add the last few bits of weathering to the model as an entire unit. OK, now it's time to add a couple of streaks to the side of the body. I'll be following the picture as previously mentioned. And uh, on this case as well, I will not uh, shade around the edges of the doors as uh, being uh, on a white background. You can see how much white is there. It's going to stick out far too much. It's going to look very obvious. On the, uh, the other models, um, it was a dark British Rail Blue, 
and lended itself a lot better to that type of effect. On uh, white, it's just it's just not going to work. It's going to look like I've just drawn a big black line around the doors. But some streaking certainly wouldn't go amiss. You can see how clean the side of the body is. Okay, as you can see I've done some streaking effects, a combination of uh, a blob of paint and wiping it down with a cotton bud and also the uh, traditional dry brushing technique as well. You can see this one's quite clean, this one I weathered previously is a little bit more dirty. It's nice to have a little bit of a difference between the rolling stock. So now I'm just going to mask up the windows with some Humbrol Maskel, 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 whatever you call it. Very impressed with this stuff, I've been using it for a number of years now. It's, think of it as paint on masking tape. Saves you having to take windows out of things, it's just a, a joy to use. You can see there I've painted an approximation of uh, the pattern uh, from the windscreen wipers. I'll just give the model something a little bit extra to look at really. It's a nice little detail that you can do if you have the time. Okay that's now drying. It will go clear when it's finished drying and then it's ready to be sprayed over. I've not uh, masked all the way to the edges of all the glass trying to give the indication of uh, years of dirt and uh, the glass has just been cleaned with a rag. Just before I varnish it, I'm going to do either one or two passes just along here, um, just to uh, blend the chassis of the model into the bottom of the body side. we will be very careful not to overdo this effect, could uh, overweather things and make it look a bit silly. Um, so got to be careful with that, but uh, that will just give that little bit of sort of feathering along the bottom of the body side that we're looking for, and then it's ready for varnishing. Just done a little bit along the top as well, just to blend the weathering on the roof just ever so slightly over the edge onto the body side. Okay, that's just about the perfect level of weathering, I think. Got a lovely bit of overspray along the bottom there. It just ties the roof and the uh, chassis together. Makes it really look like part of the same thing. So now it's time to uh, apply some matte varnish. Uh, I'm going to do this because uh, I typically handle the locos quite a lot. They get moved around, switched onto different trains. So that will protect the weathering from any of the uh, any grease in my fingers or marks or damage or whatever might happen. Uh, you might also be able to tell that the, uh, the paint for the exhaust is a little glossy. So it'll take the edge off of that and it will just seal all of the uh, effects that I've put on um, onto the model, give it that extra bit of protection. It will also give the desired effect to the windows with things like the wipers and stuff like that. So although it's not 100% necessary, as I have predominantly used, well completely used um, painting techniques on this one, the paint will be quite resistant. A bit of varnish wouldn't go amiss and it will just take some of the gloss left on this blue away. And it should look pretty close to the picture that I found.
overall I'm quite pleased with that it's still quite clean and the streaking effect on the lighter liveried locomotive has uh, had a considerable uh, effect it looks quite interesting uh, the other locomotives that I've done uh, with this technique have been in British Rail blue or darker colors and it doesn't come out quite so well but uh, got some lovely streaking down the side there and as soon as you stand away it's, uh, it's not so noticeable it's uh, only up close that it really becomes apparent okay well the uh, varnish is now dried the model's back on the layout and I've also peeled off the uh, the mask all from the windows you can just about make out the marks left by the wipers there it's not perfect as it's so tiny to work on but uh, there's an indication there it certainly looks a little bit more interesting than just masking up the entire window there's still a little bit more I can do I can add a little bit more um, black um, oil staining on the fuel tanks and I also need to fit the etch plate um, that came with the model that's the uh, the name plate for the locomotive over there currently that's just uh, printed on um, most Backman models come with an etched um, proper metal version of that to stick onto the side I've yet to do that yet but for the purposes of this video that pretty much completes the weathering on that one and I'm quite pleased with how it's come out so let's take a look at some of the other models on the layout so here we have the uh, general utility van or the GUV as you can see very dirty quite uh, close to some of the pictures I've seen and arguably one of the cleaner examples that was seen on the network at that time. The printed detail is still there and it's still legible. You can see the uh, the shading around the, uh, the the shuts for the doors, the shading at the ends, the streaks down the side, the uh, painted wheels are also a nice bonus, and the general overspray up the side. I'm very pleased with that. That's a nice effect. And I think I've just landed on the correct side of overdoing it. I think uh, you know another couple of passes along the bottom of there and you really would have started to to get something that looked brown rather than blue. I'm quite pleased with how the roof has uh, come out. I'm not an expert at doing that by any means. I've only done it to a few items on the layout, but uh, it's certainly uh, something to learn from and uh, something I can improve as more and more models get weathered. But in general I'm quite happy with that. It does uh, complement the rest of the model. We use the 47 as a reference shot. You can see just how heavily weathered it is. Nice and grimy. So there's the Mark 1 coach. Something that uh, I tried to keep looking reasonably clean. Very pleased with how the bogies and the underframe have come out. The uh, slight overspray along the sides, which just splattered onto the windows ever so slightly, has given a nice effect. You can still see through the windows, but they are ever so slightly dirty. And once again, I think the roof complements the model quite well, although it's something I'm still very much a beginner at. And once again, you can see the effects of shading the shuts around the door. So there we have a comparison against an unweathered example of exactly the same coach. Um, you can see in particular how the wheels, the bogey and the roof uh, really add to the effects on the weathered example. The uh, paint around the door is also noticeable and the, uh, the slight um, weathering to the paintwork which has taken some of the shine off it is also a welcome bonus. But in particular the wheels, the bogey and the roof make the biggest visual impact. So there's the same shot from a distance. You can see that uh, even the weathered version looks you know, relatively clean and presentable. It's not too far different in terms of the blue and grey from the unweathered example, as I was careful to minimise the amount of weathering that I did to the sides of the coach. But uh, it certainly has that used appearance. It looks a lot more realistic than the uh, shiny, plasticky model on the right-hand side. And of course, the freight rolling stock, perhaps the easiest of the lot to weather, as you uh, can get away with a few mistakes by just adding more weathering over the top of your errors. But uh, I'm pleased with how those have come out as well. I haven't, again, I haven't gone too mad. They're, uh, they're still very recognisable for the colour scheme they are in. They're not just uh, plastered with black and brown paint. Uh, whether or not I can replicate that effect on the others remains to be seen. It did happen quite by accident, but I think I know what I did. Fingers crossed anyway, I think it was just a combination of the, uh, the wash being so thin and uh, leaving a good amount of time for it to gradually evaporate and that's pulled the pigment across the panels. That's my theory anyway, but uh, either way, I'm very pleased with that. 
The effects of the wash are particularly noticeable. You can see how well all of the detail and ribbing has been picked out by the wash of black paint, which allowed us to uh, make the model look used and abused, but not absolutely plastered in, in paint. The same is true for the ends. You can see some of the, uh, the wash there as well, um, adding a little bit of uh, extra detail. Okay, well that concludes the end of this uh, weathering tutorial. Hopefully you enjoyed it, picked up a few ideas, hints and tips. As you can see in the background there, once you've got a couple of things weathered, it really starts to look good on the whole layout. One locomotive is nice on its own, but when you can complement it with other locomotives weathered to differing effects, it really does make the layout look very interesting. The biggest lesson anybody can take away from this is subtlety. Don't overdo it go past it once, twice, maybe three times with the airbrush. If you're not sure, you think, oh, I don't know, does it need more? Stop, wait for it to dry, have a look at it. You can always add more paint. Taking paint off is very difficult. So I'm gonna go and get stuck into some scenery on the layout now, and hopefully I'll be bringing you a video on that in due course. As mentioned at the beginning of the video, if you're interested in winning yourself that uh, five plank uh, coal wagon, which I've weathered and added a load to for the Warley Club, then there's a link on the uh, screen for the video concerning that. And good luck to those of you who enter.